this is a word of comfort, hopefully, and encouragement to those of us who find ourselves under siege, so to speak, from the spirit of religion. If that offends you, you know, that's, I understand, turn it off. But those of us who see it that way, we see that religion is a spirit that binds man, that keeps man in bondage. I just want to say a few things to you. And if you don't believe that, you know, check it out, see what you think. In religion, there's this construct set up where the man of God is your guide. They call them pastors. They imply that they're your shepherd, even though we know the Lord is our shepherd. And they give it as instructions. They tell you the things you should do. And they say these things from the pulpit, which is where God speaks from, supposedly. And then we respond, and then we're obedient. Or we don't. But either way, there's usually some, what they call conviction. It's usually condemnation. They, they call it conviction. And they say they claim that's a spirit. But the Lord who is my shepherd dwells within me. And if he's not compelling me to do something, whatever it is, then why should I presume to be doing it? Because see, that's the evil of religion that we are so against. And that's why we say we're for people and God. Because God doesn't condemn people. How does some other person know what you're supposed to be doing? And even if they were right, why wouldn't they trust that God is perfectly capable of telling you what you need to be doing? Because if he is and you're ignoring God, which I guess would be their argument, how do they presume that you're going to listen to them, some man? I mean, I know people do it. They do it all the time because they don't trust the spirit that lives within. And why I say it's comfort and encouragement is because I want to encourage you to listen to the spirit. If you've been saved, you have the spirit of God dwelling within you. You can be confident that he is going to lead you. He told you that. I will lead you into all truth. That means not, not micromanage your life, but just to show you what the truth is. And you still live your life. There may be some things he wants you to do, but he will tell you, him specifically. It doesn't need to be some man, some self-appointed man who presumes to take the role of your shepherd. You have a shepherd. Trust in him. And just because he's not telling you to do something right this minute doesn't mean, oh my goodness, I my life is in chaos or... And it, there's no meaning in my life because I'm not doing something. Who said that? Where does it say that in the Bible? Paul took all kinds of periods of time where we don't know what was going on. But I can imagine he was doing a lot of praying, a lot of communing with God, a lot of seeking, finding out things. He didn't just get converted and boom, he was off. I mean, he did. Initially, he went and evangelized and told about Jesus our Lord and it wasn't very effective so he learned to follow the lead of the spirit and you should do the same thing and trust that and if you're leaving religion it's probably a good chance someone's going to be telling you directly or indirectly that you are following your flesh you're doing wicked things you're only being selfish well how do they know that how do they know that like I said even if they did what's the use of saying that because if that's true then you just chose to go with your flesh but obviously you didn't otherwise that wouldn't sting that wouldn't feel bad the problem is is if it does sting and it does make you feel bad it's not the spirit <laughs> it's because you haven't learned to trust the spirit yet because the Spirit isn't there to confirm what that guy up there in the pulpit says. The Spirit is there to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. And when He speaks to you, you will know it. 
I understand it's a maturing thing, it's a growing thing, it's more and more you'll know it, but as time goes on, you'll know it, and you don't need a man to confirm that, and you don't need a spirit to confirm that man, and that's what we reject about that system, is it puts that man on that pedestal, where he's the one who's showing and guiding and teaching you what you should do, as though he would know, and it's usually cookie cutter anyway, I understand sometimes they'll have a, a they'll have a one-on-one -on -one counseling session with you and oh God showed me you need to be doing this and you need to be doing that well he's my Holy Spirit too he's my father too he's my Jesus too he's my comforter too my guide my counsel my teacher my Lord my master and he doesn't have any communication issues he can tell me. I understand people say, oh, Mark, then you just have chaos, a bunch of free agents running around doing whatever they think is right. Well, what you have now, you have kind of an organized chaos. Everyone's following this guy who's just following his flesh. Well, the Bible says to, to check all the spirits by the spirit that lives within you. That's the one that's going to give you guidance. So believe in that and have confidence in it. Trust in it make a mistake you make a mistake but at least you are doing your darndest to trust in the one who dwells within you and not listen to the voice of some man you don't need that you need the one you have you already have him that's Jesus in Jesus name amen God bless us all